What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Mind Something. If you're new here, my name is Jake, and in today's video, Asus is making a 4070 with no 12 volt power connector. And Acer looks like they want to take over where EVGA left off. Now if that kind of content sounds good to you, do me a favor, hit that like and hit the subscribe if you haven't already. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So I noticed this article today on video cards saying Asus is showing off its first RTX 4070 GPU that does not use any 12 volt power connector. And I thought that is very interesting because the TDP on a 4070 is 250 watts. So I wasn't exactly sure how they were planning on powering all 250 watts through the motherboard. But I found another article that explains it in detail, so let's get into it. So it says Asus is prepping GeForce RTX 40 graphics cards that don't have any power plugs. Use proprietary slot instead. Spotted during our tour at the Asus headquarters, the ROG team gave us a first look at an upcoming graphics card currently still in the concept phase, which is part of its GeForce RTX 40 family. The graphics card itself was a GeForce RTX 4070 design, but it didn't fall under any existing VGA product lineup and comes in an interesting design. So the graphics card itself is a 2.3 slot design that features a triple axial tech cooling fan system. And once again, it isn't part of any interesting GPU lineup from Asus such as ROG Strix, Tough Gaming, Dual, etc. The backside of the card features an extended backplate that extends beyond the PCB and there's a cutout for the air to pass through. The card also comes with a dual BIOS switch that lets you switch between performance and quiet modes, but while there's a Maglodon naming on the backplate, we were told that this isn't the final branding for this card. The most interesting aspect of the graphics card is that in addition to the standard PCIe Gen 4.0 X16 slot, it also has a special slot connected to the PCB, which is where the power would be fed through. There are no physical connectors on the PCB and we'll explain where the card gets its power in a bit. Asus has told us that this slot is proprietary, although we have seen a similar slot implementation on AMD's Radeon Pro offerings for Apple Pro systems. And here you can see the proprietary connector right here on the PCB. The connector is rated to deliver up to 600 watts of power and it will use a special connector that is available on a select range of motherboards. So the Asus Z790 Tough Gaming ATX motherboard with back connector design. For demo purposes, Asus also showcased a Z790 Tough Gaming motherboard that features no power connectors at the front. All of the connectors are on the back. The Z790 Tough Gaming connectorless design also hosts three 8-pin connectors and a single 12-volt power connector. These connectors feed power directly to the graphics card through a proprietary slot. The motherboard itself is very standard affair Z790 Tough Gaming design in an ATX form factor which features the LGA 1700 socket, a 16 plus 1 phase VRAM delivery with 60 amp MOSFETs, all of the latest I.O. connectivity, two PCIe 4x16, two PCIe 4x1x slots, a single PCIe 4.04x slot, only the topmost PCIe 4.0 by 16 slot has the proprietary connector. It also comes with the PCIe slot Q release. All M.2 slots are covered by heat sinks and feature the M.2 Q latch. The connector itself is labeled as GCH Power. Asus will have a more official name for it close to launch. According to Asus, both of these motherboards are planned to hit retailers later this year and unlike BTF connectorless motherboard offerings, which were limited to China, these two product lines are expected to be available globally. In terms of pricing, 
While it's still early to say what these GPUs and boards will cost, Asus did say that they will be priced slightly higher than normal SKUs due to the extra manufacturing cost associated with moving and realigning the connectors on the PCB. If you go for the motherboard, you can use virtually any graphics card fine, but if you buy the new connectorless GPU, then you need to buy the motherboard too since there's no other design that supports such a slot. You can also see pictures of the Asus connectorless motherboard and GPU installed in a chassis from the front and the back. Do note that the casing will also need to be designed accordingly to have support for new back connector designs on upcoming hardware. These will obviously be limited production run at first since companies still need to see if there's a demand for such products in the market or not. So going back to the connector list design, uh, it says they're going to have three 8-pin connectors and a single 12-volt connector. That's definitely enough to provide full D TDP on a 4070, but what about a 4070 Ti, a 4080, and a 4090? Um, you know, it says that it's rated for up to 600 watts, but, you know, you've also got to account for the board power as well as the CPU so you're potentially looking at you know 150 to 200 watts there alone that leaves you with about 400 watts left left so I would say a 4090 is probably not going to be capable but what about a 4080 or a 4070 Ti interesting that they have only chosen to do this design on a 4070 for right now and it'll be interesting to see if they are able to do it on the larger cards as far as the design is concerned, um, I think it could really clean up a lot of installs, but if you look at the picture that they provided, uh, this is just a terrible example of how clean it could look. I mean, you know, to me, it doesn't really matter if a PC is white or if it's black, but the overall design of this particular case with this particular GPU and the color scheme here, in my opinion, is just a very poor example of how well this can look and it'll be interesting to see if more manufacturers start to produce GPUs that can be powered through the motherboard this would obviously make things look a lot cleaner uh, but when it comes to mining that could definitely potentially be an issue unless for example GPU risers or someone else starts making risers that have this proprietary plug built into it so another weird one that I saw today came to us from Gamers Nexus. Apparently, Acer is creating a very interesting water-cooled 4090, as well as some AMD RX cards, and I'm going to let him tell you about it. With that out of the way, the reason this is interesting is, once again, because uh, they've got a three-slot design here, and for cooling, it's two axial fans, which, if I recall, are 100 millimeters, 10 centimeter fans. Uh, those are attached to a shroud. Underneath is a liquid or a radiator, which has the uh, dual pump on one end of the radiator rather than centrally. Last time we saw radiators and cards were uh, the Fury X, as an example, which was probably the probably a mistake AMD won't make again, and then the Alienware card with the weird expansion thing. So this one's fully integrated. Center's got the cold plate. Uh, we're going to check it out internally. But before taking this one apart, let's look briefly at this one. We're not going to take this apart today because it's just too early in design to really get into. So this is a triple axial design. It's much more standard in that regard. Uh, they've got some interesting shrouding here. So rather than taking the whole shroud area, surface area, and coming out to the full edges, they've basically just kind of uh, chamfered the edges around the fans and sectioned them off. This is, uh, I mean, as you can see, a Radeon design. Acer is still working on it. This is an early prototype, so it's not final yet. Things will change. Uh, but just from noticing what they've got going on right now, there's base plate here. Base plate extends and comes all the way across. This is a wide uh, PCB, so in theory, the full PCB should be populated. I actually see an unpopulated uh, connector over here as well. And it's not going to be a, a flow through, at least right now, and assuming nothing changes but instead a more traditional three axial fan into the PCB with exhaust coming vertically uh, top and bottom of the fin stack, which is fully exposed here. And this 
it seems like manufacturers have kind of finally figured out, but there was a period where um, XFX in particular, they were all blocking the vertical fin stack. So it's like they set up a fin stack to exhaust vertically, and then they would blow all the air into a plastic shroud, which was terrible and it didn't work. Anyway, so very interesting designs coming out of Acer, and I'll leave a link to this video down below, but he goes through the teardown of this particular GPU and just kind of gives you an idea of what everything looks like on the inside. And having a radiator on a 4090 uh, with a couple of fans, this, this could be a well-cooled GPU. Um, it's tough to say. I, I, I think, personally, that Acer actually put out a pretty good product whenever they created the Intel Arc A770. I don't know if you guys remember, but I was one of the first to reveal that on the channel. And unfortunately, the drivers for the A770 were pretty terrible when I got it, and mining performance was even worse. So I parted ways with it, but... It is interesting to see Acer coming up with these new designs, and I like the direction that they're going. Now, can they replace EVGA? Ah, uh, that's a tall order, but time will tell. Anyways, that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed the content. Do me a favor before you go, hit that like and hit the subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you on the next one.